Hi, I'm Teresa from Phoenix Gate Crafts, and today let's talk about silk. Silk is a unique fiber because unlike any other animal-based protein fiber, it's not a hair or fur or whatever you would classify wool as. It's actually a filament because it comes from a caterpillar. Yeah, I was kind of surprised to find out that silkworms aren't actually worms. They're technically a caterpillar. But because we're used to actually calling it a silkworm, I'm still going to call it a worm, even though, let's just be honest, it's a caterpillar. So the way we get the filament is it's one single long strand. It can be up to a mile long if it's able to become unbroken. And it's just one strand comes out of the silkworm. And that's what a fiber is, one strand, one worm. You get a whole bunch of different strands from different worms together, uh, spin them, and you can get anything from silk thread to silk yarn. Uh, because it's one strand per caterpillar for the life of the caterpillar, that's why silk is very expensive when you find 100% silk. That's why most silk yarns are only fingering weight or lace weight. You're not going to find too many 100% worsted weight yarns because they would be prohibitively expensive. However, if you are able to find 100% silk, it has a very unique quality to it. Um, how to explain this it's so it is extremely drapey because it's not a hair there's no crimp or curl or anything to it there is absolutely no stretch in silk it is whatever length it is and that's the length that it is it's got a kind of unique texture that's it's soft but it's not squishy or spongy or anything and because it's a filament and not a hair it has this luminescence to it. It doesn't actually shine. It's not sparkly, but it's kind of like how the moon reflects the sun's light is how silk reflects light. It's got this luminescent sheen to it when you put it against light, when you see it in the light, that kind of has this pearlescent sheen and it's very beautiful and completely unique to silk. I don't think there's another fiber that can quite artificially create that luminescence. Um, so most of the time you're not gonna find 100% silk, but you are going to find a blend. Usually most blends have about 10 to 15% silk. Now, when you put silk into a blend, it does, various things depending on what the mixture is. If you put it with superwash merino wool, it can act as a strengthener. It's not as strong of a strengthener as nylon or another polyamide and not quite as strong as uh, mohair, but it is stronger than if you just left the um, wool by itself. Um, but most of the time it isn't added for strength. Most of the time it is added for that sheen. So anything with um, silk in the blend is going to be a little bit drapier and um, a little bit more puddly. And it's going to be a little bit more, um, have that luminescence that ha gives it a sheen. For example, um, this sock has quite a unique sheen, and that's because this is Cascade um, Heritage Silk. And this has 15% uh, Mulberry Silk and 85% Superwash Merino. Yeah, it is a bit worn, and this does um, get some um, pilling done. But that I think is more the wool than the silk itself because the silk is a very long uh, filament. It doesn't really um, have very many of those kind of, it doesn't felt. It is more likely to be damaged in washing, especially if you're using a very harsh detergent 
Um, and there can be some damage because of um, a heat or a cold snap in the water temperature. So that's why most silk is hand washed. It's just because the fiber is delicate because it's a single filament. So the structure isn't necessarily quite as sound, but you get a bunch of them together and spun, there is more strength than that. Which brings us to the ethics section of this video. Most of my videos are going to have a, here's the ethical question about this fiber type. And um, I forgot to do it in cotton, so watch the bamboo video for the ethics of farming. It's not as clear cut and clean as you think it is. So whereas wools and alpaca hair and all those kinds of things are sheared, so as long as the farmer is treating their animals correctly, there isn't really an ethical issue with it. There is a very strong ethical issue with silk because like I said before, one filament, one caterpillar. So the way silk is gathered, they're not catching it right as it comes out of the silkworm. That would be impossible because, you know, it takes so many silkworms to create decent sized thread. You have to harvest from a ton of silkworms. You can't be standing there trying to catch each one as it starts to wind itself into a cocoon because that's what the filament is actually supposed to be doing. It's supposed to be wrapping around the caterpillar into a cocoon so that way it can become a moth. So what they do is they have a um, mulberry grove, which is what silk worms eat. And at that time in their life cycle, when all of the little caterpillars start cocooning themselves, they actually let them get into a cocoon, wrap themselves in their cocoon. So not only is the silk caterpillar producing the silk filament, there's also another gooey substance that's kind of like a glue that they excrete at the same time that hardens the um, cocoon to make it protective. And that is something that they just allow to happen completely. They allow them to completely wrap themselves in the cocoon and they allow it to harden. Then all they have to do is grab and gather all the cocoons that they are going to want to strip. This is also how they propagate um, the little flock of moths. They let some grow to become adult moths so that way they can get new baby caterpillars. This is the ethical part. They basically take the cocoons because boiling water will decimate that glue, will um, undo that glue. They take the whole cocoons and they chuck them into a vat of boiling water. I mean, they probably do it a little nicer than that, but essentially that's what they do. And because of this, the caterpillar dies. It is boiled to death. Then they can grab the cocoons that have been boiled and unwind the strand, hopefully not breaking it to get the super long filament that can be up to a mile long. And that's the ethical issue is that every time you get silk, you are killing a bunch of silkworms because in order to get a yarn that is thick, there are dozens, if not hundreds of silkworms that die to produce that thicker yarn. Um, because I don't know how many filaments it takes to create a fingering weight yarn. I do use some yarns that have silk. I know I am contributing to silkworm murder. But that's also why I refuse to get 100% silk. Now, there are more ethical ways to get silk, getting recycled silk, um, like from Darn Good Yarns. Because the silk's already gone through one product life cycle, you're not killing more silkworms in order to get that yarn. So at least it's a better impact, if not 100% pure. So to end on a nice downer note. <laughs> so anyway, I hope this helped you out. And as a quick note about this video in particular, 
I don't want anybody yelling at somebody because they use silk. I do use silk. I do use it in a limited fashion because I do like what it does to my yarn. I do realize it's a cruelty thing, but as we continue with these videos, I hope you realize that there is no good option. There's always some form of cruelty in just about every yarn option there is. I didn't cover um, the ethical issues regarding farming in my cotton video, mostly because I forgot to actually include it. And by the time I was editing it, it was kind of a, well, I'm not going to do that here. But I am going to talk about the ethics of farming and the environmental impact as well as the human cruelty impact in my bamboo video. And sometime in the future when I'm feeling brave enough, I am going to do a well-researched video um, regarding cruelty and um, environmental and other ethics involved in yarn production. Um, that's going to be a really big deep dive and you can yell at me in that video because ultimately with yarn there aren't great options and that is cause for a deeper discussion about production and supply chains that we really do need to have on a bigger, more political scale. And I'm not feeling brave enough for that discussion at the moment. So yes, I know it is cruel to use silk, but also the concept of a better option is questionable at best. So let's talk about that later. And please be kind in the comments to myself as well as other commenters. But yes, I do hope this helped you. Happy crafting. Bye.